to Stitches TV and I'm Tree. Today I want to show you how easy it is to make a gorgeous clutch bag. We're going to make a two-sided clutch bag. It's going to have leather on one side and then it will have an accent side of an interesting fabric. The fabrics that I'm going to use for my double-sided clutch bag today are this, which is a fabric that I specially created myself, and there's a video for you to see how to make it. And look at this. This is a coated silver leather from Oya Fabric Shop on the Gold Hawk Road, Shepherd's Bush, West London. So the other things that you need are a zip, mine's a 14 inch zip which is 35 centimetres and some lining. Whenever you sew with leather you do actually need to use a leather needle. I know it sounds strange but the first thing I'm going to do is just sort out my zip, maybe because I'm quite stressed out about it and it's good to get it out of the way. So with the zip I need to add a piece of leather to this end and a piece of leather to that end. So I've cut these two rectangles because we need to neaten off each end. So this one will get attached right sides together to this end and then become like that. And then this one gets attached to this end and become like that. But first of all, I need to chop off this great big lump of metal down here. What a relief! It wasn't that difficult at all. I don't know why I was so nervous. Do not undo the zip. Very important danger. Do not undo the zip until we have applied this rectangle right sides together onto the end. So we've got to put the leather right sides together with that end that we've just chopped off. And we're just going to stitch straight across there. Now I haven't sewn with this particular leather before. Sometimes when you sew with leather, in fact often, you need to put some paper there if you haven't got a special leather rolling foot. With leather, on the suede side, it can be a bit sticky. So I've just put a bit of paper between me and the zip and I'm doing it by hand because I don't want to break the needle when I go over the metal bits. But it's fine, it sews fine when you have paper there. Now I can just tear the paper away and it just leaves me with the stitches underneath. So I've attached it on that end now so it's safe to open the zip because it can't go anywhere but I just want to attach it onto the other end as well. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. The zip is closed when I do it. See how it's meeting up like that? Right sides together with the zip and I've got my paper to put on top of the leather so I can actually sew it and ready to sew. So I've gone forwards and backwards and it's fine to sew with the paper and then you just pull the paper away so you're just left with the stitching and it looks like that. So I've done both sides it's safe for me to open and close my zip Oh, it's really good. And now this becomes the measurement of everything that I cut out for the bag. So it's ended up that my bag is roughly 16 inches, which is 41 centimetres, by 10 inches, 25 centimetres. But it's just rough. Now you can use obviously any exciting fabric you want but I've used this fabric that I've created in the transform your fabric tutorial. So I can use that rectangle as a template to cut out the leather side and the lining. So I'm going to take my fabric and put it right sides together onto the leather and then just cut it out. So you can really see it coming together now. Look, that's the leather side and then that's my accent side. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the leather as a template, my leather rectangle, as a template to cut out my green lining. Wow, look at that. 
So the first thing that we need to do is to get our zip and put it face down on our accent side, lining up all those leather bits. And we're simply going to stitch going straight all the way along here, but we're going to use a zigzag stitch, which I use to keep the fabric in place. Whenever you have something tricky to sew, it's a really good idea to sew it first with a zigzag stitch and then go in and touch the tops of the Vs with a straight stitch afterwards. It acts kind of like a stay stitch and it makes it so much more of a pleasure to sew. Now my first bit that I'm sewing is that leather again. So I've got a bit of kitchen towel there to act as a barrier between me and the leather. And then I'm ready to just sew straight along. Now I'm sewing quite close to the edge of the zip. The edge of the zip. This is what we've got so far. I'm just going to take the tissue off now, the, the kitchen towel. And I'm going to get the lining, one of the pieces of lining. I'm going to lay it on top and I'm effectively, I'm creating a zip sandwich. So it's going in between and now I'm, I'm going to zigzag the lining. Now everything is all lined up with the edge. And you're just zigzagging all the way along. So it should look something like this. There's the zip sandwiched inside. But before we press it all back, we need to do a straight stitch that touches the tips just inside of all of the V's of the zigzag. So we're going to do a straight stitch, but on the mini JL, I need to make the needle go to the left, so I've put it on E. And I'm just touching the tops of all of those V's of the zigzags. So we've got the lining, we've got our accent side, now we need to press it all away from the zip. So I'm going to do that now with an iron. Ow. Oh, ow. Um, the metal of the zip gets really hot. You need to press your lining away from the zip. So I'm doing the lining, pressing it away from the zip. I'm going to put my stitchless, liberated by stitchless and me label. I want it to go on the accent side. Now if you would like some stitchless labels, all you have to do is just post up any of your stitchless projects on my Facebook page, Stitchless Tree. When you're doing a label, it's a good idea to fold in the corners and press it with an iron, then put a little bit of Bonderweb on and basically stick it onto your garment first using an iron with lots of steam and then when you've stuck it on then it will be so much easier to sew. So now it's time to do the leather. So we've got to face the leather right sides down towards the zip. Now because we're sewing on the leather it's, we're going to have to use lots of paper, so I'm cutting lots of strips of kitchen roll. Now if you've got more than a little mini JL, which is essentially a child sewing machine, then you've probably got a special rolling foot which you use for sewing leather, but who needs a rolling foot when you've got kitchen roll, eh? Using a zigzag stitch, just do the same as we did on the other side, so we're going to work our way down the edge of the zip. So that I've stitched the leather on now. So remember when you do the lining, it's all about sandwiching the zip. So we don't put the lining here. We have to put the lining here. So I'm gonna show you that. We put the lining, get the lining, put it right sides together with the zip because we're sandwiching the zip. Put it right sides together. And then we're gonna do that zigzag again. Now. We're still, we're sewing on the side that we just sewed a minute ago because fabric, when you sew, is always to the left of the machine or you're going to be squashing it inside here. So you've got to keep the paper on because now we've got to do straight stitch, just touching the tops of all those Vs. So I'm turning it to E so my needle is to the left. 
so just touch the tops of those bins. Now we can take the paper off. So I'm just tearing the paper off, like that. Look at that. Isn't that fantastic? Now I've just got to press this side, but do it from the side of the lining. And be really careful because sometimes when you use steam and too much heat with the leather, you ruin the leather. So this is what we have so far. We've got leather at the back and then we've got our funky fabric on the front. Emergency, emergency, super really important moment. Disaster if you forget this. You must open your zip. Look at that lovely lining. You must open your zip now. For the next stages, you must open your zip now. The amount of times I've forgotten, sewn up the whole bag and, oh, I couldn't turn it round. What we need to do is we put our bag, our leather and our funky fabric together and our lining together. Right, you make sure that your zips are lined up together this is that little piece of leather that was at the end of the zip, okay? And you sort of squidge it like that. You fold it a little bit like that so it creates a kind of pleat. Then you put the lining over and then what you do, you're going to sew with the lining straight there. Now my fabrics don't meet up exactly so I'm going to start there. So I'm going to sew from there going straight down on one side. But I have to remember to put the paper underneath the leather side so it doesn't stick. So I'm using a straight stitch, which is D on the Mini JL. I'm using the hand wheel at the side because there's a lot of thickness here at the moment and I don't want to break a needle. And lining everything up and then just sewing straight down. So we went straight down on that side there. Now when you sew, if you are using my funky fabric, it can be a bit sticky sewing on that side. So you might actually need some paper on that side. But if you're using regular fabric, you'll be fine. So then you do exactly the same on the other side over here as well. Okay, so we've sewn both sides of the bag. Now we're gonna deal with the corners of the bag at the bottom. Now corners are not right angles. They are smooth curves that come around in one smooth curve. So do you see that? That's a smooth curve, not a right angle. So basically you've stitched all around the edge and now you just need to stitch down that side of the lining and that side of the lining, okay? So you're stitching down there. We need to trim off the bulk that happens around the zip area at each end. Now when I do it, I do feel really, really nervous, but just go for it. Oh God, it really makes me feel nervous. Just make sure you never go over the stitching there, but you need to go about that close or you'll end up with loads of bulk. Magical moment, turning the bag. I've got my fingers in there, got my fingers on the top. I'm pushing in the corners first and just sort of feeling that curve around. Do it on both sides, push them in and then hold those bits and turn it around. So those bits where the zips are, you need to get your finger right in there and sort of, ooh, can you see that? Can you see that? You're sort of pushing it out like that. And pressing it is very important that you press it. But we're nearly there and that is a bit special. Pressing is very, very important. It really gives it professional look. And finally we've got to go back inside again because we've got to finish off that lining. Look how gorgeous that looks. So I'm going to go inside, tuck in all your raw edges, fold up a little hem and just press it because it makes it a lot easier to sew. Now if you want to change your thread to green, which I guess I should do, feel free, but I'm just staying with black. So it's a straight stitch, 
And I'm not going to go backwards and forwards, I'm just going to go straight along the bottom. The zip pull, which we use a strip of the lovely leather. I've cut it a lot longer than I probably need it to be, because then I can always cut it off afterwards. So to get it through the hole of the zip pull, I find if I fold it a little bit and then feed it through the hole, line them up together, and then you could put tassels on here, you could put a furry foxtail. I have a video for making a furry foxtail. So we do a knot around my fingers. You just do a knot that's really, really close to the end of the zip pull and pull it really, whoops, really tight. And I think that that's a much more professional finish. But I'm just going to mitre the ends of it. It's as easy as that. Lined, beautifully lined, leather clutch bag with funky transformed fabric made in about an hour with Stitchless Tree. Thank you so much for watching my tutorials. Keep all those comments coming and I love the photos. Keep sending me the photos. Thanks a lot. Bye.